How dare the government tell an American woman that she can't fight in combat in time of war? A major issue for American women after the first Gulf War was the debate about females serving in combat. Supporters of this issue were elated by the role that women had played in the war. They argued that now was the time to repeal all laws forbidding women from holding positions that might involve them in combat. America had seen on television women in camouflage whose abilities seemed endless and they were inclined, supporters believed, to let women volunteer for combat positions. So Congresswoman Patricia Schroeder superheaded the drive in the House of Representatives. To back her cause, she used the recommendation of the powerful Board of the Defense Department Advisory Committee on Women in the Services. This board made up approximately 35 civilians who are outstanding in their fields, is appointed by the Secretary of Defense to give advice about women's issues in the military. Now, after listening to military advisors and reviewing the role that women played in the war, the Dakowitz Board voted 29 to 4 to recommend that females should be allowed to become combatants. When this recommendation was presented to the membership of Dakowitz, approximately 300 men and women, the audience broke into cheers. Many believed that this would pave the way for women to reach the highest positions in the armed services. Some women in the military thought that they were denied promotions because they hadn't participated in combat. Jeanne Holm, a retired Air Force Major General, she spoke for them, and when she said, combat experience is the linchpin for everything else. When Schroeder heard about the board's recommendation, she began her drive in earnest. Schroeder encouraged members of the Dakowitz to lobby their representatives and senators while she tried to round up votes in the House. She pointed out that arguing whether women could serve in combat was a moot point. Women had been in very dangerous situations during Desert Storm, situations that most would have labeled combat. Besides, there were no more safe places in war anymore, nowhere. Modern missiles could strike anyone, anywhere, on or off the battlefield. Removing the official restrictions not only would be more honest, she argued, but it could open up new opportunities for women in the military. That's what women wanted. At the same time, there were many women who did not want the combat exclusions eliminated, including women returning from the war. It was true, they conceded, that Scud missiles could kill men and women anywhere, but there were still positions that were more dangerous than others, and in their opinion, positions that should be off-limits to women. So what's your view on this issue? Do you feel women should be allowed to fight in time of war just like the men? Well, leave your comments in the description. You know, this is the era of women's rights again, but how far do those rights go in time of combat? Well, like, subscribe, and think for yourself. This has been a Marilogic Channel.